All right, I guess we're live stream. Hello, Facebook. Hope you're all doing well today. Hello, Facebook. And uh, today I've got uh, two co-hosts in studio with me. I've got Andrew Marr. Andrew, say hello. Hi. Good morning. And Gina Ruby. Hey there. Good to see you. Today's going to be a powerful show. Today we're going to be talking about springing into courage and how you can take your life and really clean the clutter out of all areas of your life, whether it's your your office or your purse. We're going to be talking about how to really take that and... Um, Take that you take your life to a new level. So I hope you stay tuned to this. It's going to be a powerful show, and we're getting ready to go. You're behind scenes right now with us, and we're getting ready to kick it off right now. Here we go. Voices of Courage is sponsored by Candy Foster. It's time to take a journey to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Candy Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome to Voices of Courage. I'm your host, Ken D. Foster. You know, I know... At this very moment, you can achieve extraordinary feats by harnessing the unlimited power of courage. I know this because I've used courage to transform every part of my life and the lives of my clients. The results of applying daily courage have been nothing short of extraordinary. Why? Because history is not your destiny. Your history is not your destiny, right? You can write, rewrite the scripts in your life and you can apply courage consistently to unleash the hidden power of the heart, which changes everything. Today, on my show, we're going to explore how to use courage to clean up the clutter in your life, whether it be in your home, whether it be in your office, your purse, your friendships, your body, your mind. I'm going to give you the threads that hold all these areas of life together and show you how to disassemble what's not working for you. Let's face it, it's May, right? And it's the end of spring. And yet, you know, there are a whole bunch of shows out there that were doing spring cleaning. And, you know, so my question to you is, you know, how'd that work for you? How are you doing? Did you clean up everything? Is everything organized? Well, uh, probably not for a lot of you. So if this is you, then I encourage you to not only listen to this show once and pass it on to your friends, but listen to it a couple times because there are some tips in here that are actually going to change how you think and how you clean up the clutter in your life forever, right? You know, there's a lot of us out there that use excuses. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed out. Um, you know, I just don't have the time to start my cleaning, right? Can you relate? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think everybody can relate. So what's causing the overwhelm? What's causing us to be stressed out? What's causing you to stop when you have good intentions to keep going? Why is it that you're committed to changing and not being able to do that? Why is that? Well, today on this show, we're going to deliver the answers that you've been looking for. So imagine this. Imagine how it would feel if you were clutter-free. Just in your home and your office. Just clutter-free, really. Now imagine if you were able to let go of that overwhelm and that stress and maybe some of the toxic people in your life permanently. How would you feel? Think about that. Well, listen, in the first part of this show, I'm going to help you find the solutions to clean up your environment, you know, from your purse to your patio, right? From your office to your outfits. This is what we're going to be talking about. Next part of the show, we're going to discuss what's been stopping you from cleaning up the clutter. How to get in touch with the mental and emotional blocks that are stopping your success. In the third segment, we're going to be talking to you about how to truly have a body for life that is healthy and energetic. And in our last segment, we're going to be introducing several ways to put more fun in your life and not just temporarily, but permanently. But before we get to all this, I have a surprise for you today. I have two experts whose wisdom I believe will exponentially help you to achieve exactly 
what you've been looking to achieve. I have in studio today with me Gina, Gina Ruby. Gina is a certified health coach and life strategist. Her 15 years of acting and modeling, along with her 11 years of health and wellness coaching, yep. have equipped her to share the message that everyone can uh, be healthier, everyone can be happier physically and mentally if they want it. She's living proof that it can be done since she had to start from scratch at age 40, going from a victim to victor. Anything is impossible. In fact, Gina's motto is joy is a choice, so choose joy. Amen. 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 Welcome, Gina. <laughs> hey, it's you. great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's good uh, to be here. Yeah, it's wonderful to hear, have you here in studio. Well, I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking um, a whole bunch here. So let me introduce Andrew first before we get to it. Andrew Marr is the vice president of sales at Coastal Payroll Services. He is an extraordinary individual. He's a challenger. He's a motivator. He's a a listener. He's a questioner. For the past twenty years, Andrew has been helping people reach their goals, improve their thinking, and become the ve- best version of themselves. He is a three-time Ironman, a PGA golf professional, and a lifelong learner. These are the kind of people I love to have yeah, around. Let's me. do it. All right, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Bring wow. It. Okay, so let's get into this uh, this thing about clutter. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Clutter is, uh, you know, it can really stop us. As I mentioned uh, earlier in the show, you know, we uh, a lot of people have great intentions, Right. Sure. So, um, Gina, yeah. why do you think uh, that clutter stays in people's lives, even though they have good intentions? Well, you know, if you let it go and go and go, then it's daunting. Mm-hmm. So, for me, the easiest thing, and I just was sharing with Ken yesterday, that I decided to tackle my office on Monday. Wow. But I knew that if I tackled it, it was going to get even messier before it got cleaner. And so um, my husband was going to be gone for three days. So I could let that tornado go in my, my home of pulling everything out of the closet and the drawers. Because it's amazing. Clutter seems to multiply. If you don't stay on top of it, it multiplies. And then it just is overwhelming. So I just, for you know months, I've just shut the door. So nobody else knows that clutter is there. But I do. And it's an energy sucker. So I was finally like, enough is enough. It, it does suck our energy. That's mm-hmm. for sure. And Andrew, what uh, what about you, man? Why do you what do you think is the cause of people keeping the clutter? Well, so let me just say one thing. My mom is going to see the the title of the show and think it's about actual cleaning. I grew up with this little lady in Scotland that just kept the house so clean it was ridiculous. So when she sees the title, she's gonna be like, "Oh my god, he's gonna be talking about cleaning. This is amazing." Um, so I grew up in a spotless household. There was not a piece of dust in were, my were house. You, were you a rebel around that though? I, I was a little rebel, and yeah. uh, still am, and uh, and many things that I do, and I kind of moved the the couch around and would move the pillows around and would lay things in certain places to get a reaction from my mom, which by the way, it did. Um, so spring cleaning to me and, and clutter and a household that's clean has been something that's been instilled in me since I was so young. So now in, in our household with Amanda, my girlfriend, we, we're very good about you know essential oils. We're very good about creating a space where there's no clutter, but that's my wee mom in Scotland. That's her fault for drilling this into me over all those years. That's you know, I, I grew up. I grew up in a house so that was a little different than that, right? Everybody had crap everywhere, <laughs> 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 and I was and I was a rebel. So this worked in my favor, yeah. right? So I was the only one. I kind of came in organized. I was the only one that had the clean room that was organized that didn't like the clutter that would just shut my bedroom door and clean and you know and and pretend like they didn't even exist right because there was so much clutter in our house how about you Gina? well one of the reasons clutter accumulates is because people like me think i'm going to need this someday i I could use this someday so i i keep it Mm -hmm. Um, my husband is just like you guys he is a minimalist and very neat very neat nick and so um Mm -hmm. he's helped me be much more um proactive about getting rid of stuff if i don't need it then give it away, pay it forward, and then if I need it down the road, just get it again. But, you know, I was a school teacher. I subbed for years in my early years, and so you save all those things just in case. Yeah. And I learned to clean up. So that is the mindset, though. I think mm-hmm. that's an important piece that we need to talk about, right? What are the beliefs that keep people stuck, right? You just said a couple of them. 
oh, I'll, you know, maybe I'll need it in the future. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just save it for another day. Uh, you know, those mindsets. What other mindsets do we have that are stopping people from letting go of their clutter? Yeah. So I think that what we're all describing here is attachment, right? We're attaching ourselves to things based on stories in our lives and based on things that we believe or think we will need in the future. So we're essentially storytelling about something that's not real Mm -hmm. and we're just going to keep it just in case. Mm -hmm. When nine times out of ten, it probably doesn't serve us and it's I think that's such a metaphor for life in general. Three minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, Well, you know, I want to add one other thing too for women. When we buy, whether it's makeup or purses or clothes, if we don't use it, we feel guilty giving it away because we spent money on it. So there's this time frame where we keep it for months and months before we feel okay to pitch it. And that just stacks up. See, I think clutter starts with an unruly mind, okay? Because the mind is over our emotions. The emotions are over actions, actions over results, and results over destiny, right? So if you're not managing your mind, if you're not aware, if you're not aware of what, how this clutter is really impacting you, yeah, I saw a study once where uh, they were talking about the uh, subconscious mind, that it keeps track of every little piece of paper, piece of dust. Everything in our environment is completely in there somewhere, right? So it's like, wow, when I got that, I thought, you know what? I'm cleaning out everything, right? Everything in my environment. And as I did, I had more peace in my mind. It was really weird. Have you experienced anything like that? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it just, it's an energy sucker, Mm -hmm. subconscious and conscious. Mm -hmm. And when we clear it out, so many other things start clearing out in our lives. Absolutely. You know, there's a solution to some of this too. It's, um, I think a lot of times we ask poor questions. Should I keep this or should I keep that? I'm not sure that's the right question, right? I think a more empowering question is, um, what are, what are three things I can do today to empower my environment or empower myself or feel even greater walking into my space? I think that's a different question than should I keep it or not? We're, for, we're focused on, does this, does this empower me or does this disempower me by having all these file folders in my office or or a cluttered purse? What do we talk about the purse? How many hours oh, yeah. a year? Let's talk about uh, that. What is that? I know. I was talking to Ken yesterday. I couldn't find my pet my pen. Okay. In this dark hole. Right. And we calculated women. Gina just showed us a giant purse, yeah, right? It's a, a big giant purse. purse. So about 60 seconds it took me to find my pen. You add that up, it's an hour a month. It's 12 hours a year that we're wasting just on digging wow. stuff in a purse, let alone a cluttered office or a cluttered bedroom or a closet. We waste time. That's crazy, incredible. isn't it? Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that incredible? Well, okay, so... What we need to do then is we got to start to start with the mind, start thinking about what we can do to release the, the beliefs, the choices and the actions of the past that we've been holding on to this clutter, right? Get in touch with our purpose and why we're going to do this and then take some immediate actions. All righty. So we got uh, a whole bunch more coming up in uh, the next segment. We're going to be talking about how to identify and overcome the stress uh, stoppers that are stopping you from really releasing everything in your life. We're going to go deep in it. Yay. Prosperity. Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. Attention business owners, the feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you, who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called... Back in 30 seconds. invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. 
We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Candy Foster. talking about overcoming clutter and we're talking about how to how to identify in this segment these stoppers that stop us from really moving forward in our life right whether we're trying to clean up the workplace or the kitchen or the table or the closet or the desk or the purse or maybe cleaning up your friendships that's an important yeah. subject right Absolutely. all right Gina you've been a coach for 11 years right you've had a lot of people come to you and talk to you about cleaning up their lives, right? Yep, yep. What is the tips we can give this audience? What are the what are the three most important things they need to do to clean up these uh, these beliefs that are stopping them? Well, first of all, I mean, I believe everybody in and of themselves could do it by themselves. If you have a strong enough why, then that will help you get past it. But the secret sauce really is having accountability. So if you if you want to lose weight or you want to um, have better friendships, having somebody accountable to, to really follow through with the steps because it's, it's tr- retraining a new muscle and it's not easy to do on our own. It's possible. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. And so the first step is definitely to have an accountability partner, a mentor, a coach who can hold them accountable, but also give them the correct information because some people have good intentions and they guess on how to lose weight. But they're doing the cookie diet, and that is not a healthy way to lose weight. So really having the education, the knowledge. Um, so those two, I would say the top two, accountability, and then having somebody who knows, who's been there, knows how to get you to the other side. You know, that cookie uh, that cookie diet, I've tried that. <laughs> you know, I've, tried, I've tried doing Tasty. the, uh, the uh, sugar-free, gluten-free cookies. I'm sure they don't have any <laughs> calories know. in them, but that doesn't work. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a that's a really good tip. I, I love that. Okay, accountability partner, coaches. Yep. That's why it, they hire yep. people like us. And the right? third yeah. thing is to make it fun. Mm-hmm. If it's not fun, I don't want to do it. So I really try to infuse some way to have fun while they're doing it, whether it's to celebrate the victory, make sure there's always some kind of a celebration that's non-caloric, mm-hmm. um, but to make make it fun. Because when you're trying to, to clean up your life, and no, no matter what area, there has to be fun infused or, you know, the brain will just go back to old habits yeah. of what it knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Andrew, any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, a lot. And both you guys are, are obviously very, very knowledgeable in this area. I think for me, one of the major pieces is to know where you're going. So have a mindset of know where you're going. And that takes work in itself, right? That takes that presence, that meditation, that time to understand, first of all, who you are. And then creating a mindset of success would be to know where that journey is going to go with the mindset also that the flexibility is there, that that journey is going to change, is going to ebb and flow. And the success that you see initially might change over time too. But if you're driving down a road and you have no idea where you're going, how are you supposed to get there? And and for me, you know, I play professional golf, Ryan Ironman triathlons. I visualized the end of the race. It was the end of the race. And that was the first thing I did before even training was me finishing the race. And I would dream at night about finishing the race. I would meditate on me crossing the finish line. I would do it. I would, I would meditate on me coming first over the finish line. That never happened because I was never any good. But I, but I did it anyway. And then what I would do is I put the plans in place to get there. So the nutrition piece, the training piece, how many hours a week did I need to get there? What time did I have to get up in the morning to fulfill that? What time did I have to go to bed? How many hours did I have to sleep? So there was a whole plan put in place there, but it started with what do I want to achieve and what's the outcome? Yeah, that's really good. And I, I'm just sitting here thinking as, uh, as you're, you're sharing with that, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are, are adverse to setting up goals and, and really, um, looking at, um, goals every morning and, you know, and doing that stuff. Right. So, um, I, I think that's one way. I think we can do it that way. I think there's other ways to do that too. I, but I like what you said. The future creates our present mm-hmm. moment, yeah. right? Sure. Future. Yeah. So whether you're, you're, uh, everybody has to do it their way, right? Absolutely. So, but here's what I ask everybody. Is your way working? You're okay. Right. <laughs> right. Because if it's not, something's right? got to change. Something's got to change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so how do we do it? You know, if we've got a success stopper inside of us, right? You know, for me, I've found that if I get somebody to acknowledge what's not working, that's the first step. 
just acknowledge, you know what? I got crap in my life. I've got stuff going on. Maybe I don't have uh, the right friendships. Maybe I don't have, uh, maybe my purse isn't clean. You know, what, whatever it is. <laughs> I've seen your purse and it's not clean. Yeah, we, if, if we don't acknowledge it, we can't move forward. So first step right. is acknowledgement, right? right. So, <clears throat> you know, once we get in touch with what it is that's not working, um, a lot of times it's important to journal. We need to take out and get that out of your head and put it on paper and really get in clear with, so why isn't this working in my life? You know, I believe, and I've been coaching long enough to know that this is true. Everybody has their answers inside of them. Mm -hmm. I don't have your answers. Gina doesn't have your answers. Andrew doesn't have your answers. We can motivate you and inspire you to get to your answers, but you ultimately have to do the work. So that journaling piece is an important piece. And then when you get the insights, because ultimately – what I try to get people to is their their gut, their intuition. When you understand how to develop your intuition, now you can now you you have an internal guide that's guiding you to where you need to go, right? Exactly. Okay, but we can't get there if we've got a lot of success stoppers in our in our in our in our life, right? Yep. We've got to increase that energy, that vibration, that that power that we all have to be able to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And I think, if you don't mind, I'll share a quick story on that note. So at, at 17, 18 years old, I had severe depression and anxiety. I was in bed for eight months. And so to talk about success stoppers, I may have had thousands of success stoppers in my mind and in my body at that time. Um, and it was a matter of dealing with them one at a time. But it was an awareness um, task and challenge too to see why was I being held back? What was holding me back? And addressing each one at that time in order for me to move forward and get out of bed, start shaving again, start showering again, start interacting with the world. Um, and I think you, you've got to prioritize that too, right? Like there could be a thousand success stoppers we have in our life. But first of all, what is success? What are the most important? And how do we address them on a hierarchy to, to get better and, and progress, which I think is a, a really important word for human beings. Yeah. And there can be a thousand success starters, too. We just have to take the focus off the stopper and on the starter. And they're little tiny things sometimes that make a, a profound difference. Just like when a pilot is flying, they're course correcting the, the whole time. Right. If they don't course correct, they can start in Maryland and they intend to go to Hawaii, but they'll end up in Alaska. So those little course corrections are so, they don't look big, but they're so pivotal. You know, it's, it's interesting because the, the mindset of the uh, masses is not one of really looking at things that aren't working and fixing them, believe it or not, okay? I mean, you find that in companies and corporations that are, that are you know, manufacturing or, you know, developing something. But for the, for the average person, the work is, um, it doesn't have to be this painful, crazy, terrible thing to do. Like Andrew was saying earlier, I found it's just one day at a time for me. It's just one day, one day. Okay, what am I going to do today to improve my my life? And one thing I did want to say when we were in the environment uh, uh, section in the beginning, there is a system that I coach people to use, and um, and that's it's really simple. You get four boxes. Go to a room. Get four boxes. One box you label give away. One box you label move it to another room. Another box you label it trash it. And the last box we label it. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, give it, trash it. Oh, move. Give it, trash it, move it. Store it. Store it. That's yeah. it. But well for, done, a purpose, guys. for a purpose. For a purpose. Okay. So, you know, that helps to go in a room and do that really quickly. And uh, then you can go to the next room and the next room and the next room. Yeah. Now, the mind is we're talking these success stoppers. So, I just gave you a system. What would stop you from actually applying that system? That's really what we're talking right now. And there's a whole bunch of ways we can do this. I mean, there is Hawaiian uh, huna breathing. There is something called the Sedona method that asks questions. There's uh, uh, emotional freedom technique. We can tap. Um, we can journal. We can do uh, some uh, inventory of the thoughts that we have and release them. There's a whole bunch of tools that we have that we can, we can uh, use those. In fact... Yeah. I wanted to uh, mention, let's see, we got uh, just a, a, how much we got left on? We got two minutes. So I can mention this. 
Um, Gina, what's your website? Because Gina's a coach. She helps people. With yes. This. So, and in fact, I just put it before and after on my Facebook page today. So the quickest, fastest way to get a hold of me is just go to my Facebook page, Gina Ruby, G-I-N-A-R-U-B-Y. There's a long German name after it, Peter Baugh. But um, if you just put in Gina Ruby, I pop up all over the place. And I would love to answer people's questions if they have any questions about losing weight and getting healthy and really getting that healthier version of their body. That's great. You don't look uh, German, but uh, it, do you oh, have German in well, you? Well, I'm half German, but my husband's last name is Puterbaugh. Okay. So you know, okay. I give him props by having right. that up there. <laughs> so you got, you got the German, you got the England, and you got the it's Scottish. Scottish. The best part. We got, it's multicultural. <laughs> we got them all. And, and Andrew, how do they get a hold of you, too? Yeah, so at Facebook, Andrew Marr. Um, Twitter, I think, is a really good platform for discussion these uh-huh. days. Um, Instagram, I have this interest name, wiseguy.life. So I tend to post some of my thoughts on there about you know, education, food, motivation, inspiration, all those things. So wiseguy.life. I love that. Okay. So you are a wise guy. That's why you're here today. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So listen, we uh, coming up in our next segment, we're going to be talking about your body. Okay. So it's mind over body. But listen, some, some people's bodies are like way out of control. We've got pain in it. We're over beasts. We've got challenges. That's coming up in our next segment. Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Attention business owners. The feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. We're back with Voices of Courage. Welcome back to Voices of Courage. I'm Gina Ruby, and joining with my co-host, Kendi Foster, and the fabulous Andrew Marr. Yes. Yay! All right. Oh, and today, oh, right now we're going to talk about, um, more specifically, healthy body. Healthy body. Yeah, healthy mind, healthy body, right? Hmm. Yes. So, you know, we, there's, uh, they tell me if uh, there's parts of our country that were 70% obese, all right? 70%, that's obese. That's yes, not just yeah. overweight, that's obese, right? How do we get there? How do we get there, Gina? You know, it's, it's just, uh, I think it's a lot of unconscious habits. People do stuff, the, the, you know, go eat the 16-ounce steak and, um, you know, have this yummy shake after midnight. It's half off. And so some of it is just mindless and some of it is food is a drug. It's a legal drug. So, you know, sugar has that dopamine response and it keeps us addicted and they eat more and more and more. And all of a sudden, we're sort of in this frenzy of, we're overweight. We don't feel good. We definitely don't feel like exercising. And it's a vicious circle. And I love helping people get out of that vicious circle and creating new habits, new mindset for sure. Um, one, one of the things one of my clients said to me when she was little is her mom said, you'll be fat and ugly your whole life. Mm. And, and that's a mindset thing because the, the mind runs the ship. Mm. I can teach people healthy habits all day long. Mm. But until we fix this, like mm. we talked about in the last segment, mm. 
And yeah. people just need to be reminded that, you know, those ugly things told to us as a kids, they're not true. Kids take them as truth. But I love helping people create a new story in their brain. Get so really let, me, old. let me ask you, you know, here's, here's the challenge that I, I know a lot of people have, you know, sugar's good. It tastes good, right? Yummy. Fat. We love fats. We yeah. like to salt things, right? And, you know, and then there's the stimulants they're putting in all the food, all the, you know, the caffeines and, and what have yep. the energy drinks, all those things are difficult to get off for people. Yeah. And, yeah. and so education, right? Like you, you asked the question, how did we get here? Mm-hmm. We got here because we didn't know what we didn't know. And there were certain things in the media that we learned as kids. And then families adopted those strategies. And whether that's Philadelphia, Illinois, Chicago, or, or San Diego. And, and, you, and you run your life through them. I would love to have been five or six years old and someone to sit down and tell me, hey, by the way, when you eat this, this is probably how you're going to feel. And when you eat this, this is what it's going to do for you. So I think lack of education in that realm is, is incredibly um, detrimental to the way that kids are growing up. And I think that we have to keep talking about that. I think that that's something that, that the media uh, and schools education levels from start to finish need to bring to the forefront. People are going to make their own choices. That's fine but at least give them the facts on what food actually is and how it should be treated as fuel for Amen. your body yes, and not just something that you put in at times of stress, which we all do. Gina told me a story earlier how she had a whole box of Oreo cookies for like five days in a row, and I thought that, <laughs> wow. Oh, Gina it told was, you that story. It's true confessions. It's amazing. Right. Sorry for saying that, but it, it, it's one of those things that is emotional eating is, is incredibly important, and it happens to a lot of people, but how can we shift that mindset? That's a really good yeah. point. You know, I tell you, I grew up in a household where, it's probably my perception, but all I, all I wanted to do was have fun. All I wanted was I wanted to cut out, <clears throat> cut in half duality. We live in duality, good and bad, light and dark, pain and pleasure, right? I wanted to cut it in half and only have the good part, right? <laughs> I didn't want to have discipline. I didn't want to feel any kind of pain. I didn't want to feel any of that stuff, right? You know, and <clears throat> what happened for me and I think happens to a lot of people, we wake up one day and all the things we tried to use – to kind of fix and get rid of the pain mm-hmm. um, or, or not even deal with it, right? Um, stop working, right? They just stop working. You know, you can, you can eat emotionally for a while, but listen, at one point, it stops working. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you wake up, you look in the mirror, and you go, what happened? What did I do, right? And then you feel a little hopeless. You feel like there's no way out. But that's what this show is all about. There is hope. There is a way out. Um, we have the solutions right here. It's about changing your, your, your mind, making some new commitments, and finding the courage. Finding the courage. Courage is undeveloped in so many of us, right? I know it's, uh, it's something I came in with, but I, you know, I was, had a reckless courage and, you know, as a kid because I had a lot of courage. But when we hone our courage, when we learn how to use it and use the courage to feel the pain to make the change, feel the pain to make the change, right? So it doesn't mean we have to live in pain. Pain is an indicator that something is off, but we can heal anything just about, unless the body is so far gone you can't heal it. But even then I read stories of people like Anita Morjani and dying to be me who was on her deathbed four days to live and she went to light and had a, uh, was out cancer free within four, what, 30 days, something like that. You know, so. Well, there's the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. So uh, either way, is g- there's going to be some pain, but the pain of discipline has amazing consequences, and the pain of regret has icky consequences. So you have to go through some kind of pain to get to the other side if you want something bad enough. And uh, that courage actually empowers people to get to the other side in the midst of Maybe it might even be fear, too. Sometimes people think if they lose weight, they'll lose their friends, they'll lose their social crowd. So there's this fear of hanging on to the old because at least they know it. But getting to the other side, there's so many more beautiful um, things and people to meet when you take that courage and make it something good. Gina, I think that's fantastic. And and I want to take that one step further after that. I think auditing the people in your life, right? Talk about spring cleaning. Can we audit the people in our life and create our tribe? 
right? And our tribes are going to change throughout our lives. Our tribes are different when we're five years old, 15 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old. I don't know what it's like after 40, so people have to tell me. But tribes will change, and it's a matter of aligning ourselves with those people to create that higher vibration for ourselves based on where we want to go and who we want to be. Exactly. Isn't that the truth? So, you know, they uh, I've seen research done that says you are your closest six friends, basically. And, and the reason they say that is because the mindsets of those people are probably a lot like yourself. If they're negative, you're probably negative. If they're happy, you're probably happy. If you're if they're in a place where they're struggling financially, that's probably who you are. Okay, it's not an end all be all, but you can use that as a guideline. Look around your friends. You know, are they really the friends that you want in your life? Well, yeah, there was an article that came out in um, USA News a, a few years ago. Getting obese is contagious. And that sounds kind of mean and judgmental, but it's true. If you're around people that like to eat a lot, they're going to eat a lot. But also getting healthy is contagious. So if you start surrounding yourself with people healthy, not just healthy eating habits, but healthy mindset, healthy joy, then that's contagious. Cause, and I've seen it in my own. I gravitate to people who are joyful because I'm joyful and it's my core value. And there's been a couple of people that have, you know, kind of broke, not broken into, but come into my life and they actually get more joyful because they wanted to and they see what joy is and, and contentment and fulfillment. But if they want to stay negative Nellies, they weed themselves out. out I don't go. push them out. They weed themselves out. Awesome. And, you know, yeah. the, the, uh, of course, the, the places we a lot of times don't have choice with people are our family. family. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. So family, of course, that's a different dynamic, isn't it? So, you know, I use family in, in this case, use them as an indicator for me of how long, how far I've come on my own progression, my own spiritual growth, right? Can I be with, you know, we all got some crazy people in our family. Let's face it. Can I be with some of the crazy people and really just be there in peace? Right? Mm -hmm. Can I be there when somebody's disagreeing uh, adamantly with what I know to be absolutely truth and let them be right? Right? Yep. Can I just be in that place without having to express my ego and dump me all over them? Right? That's growth. Yeah, it's a barometer of growth for sure because, you know, we, we got to love them. They're our family, but we don't have to let their ick get on us and affect us and drag us down. We can maintain and just, you know, again, show others that courage to just nod our head and say, mm, thank you very much for sharing and exactly. not get all bent out of shape. Exactly. Okay. So body, Andrew, where yes. are we going with this? How are we going to, you're an Iron Man. He's a three-time Iron Man. <laughs> Listen, how do people that are, you know, want to take that next step to start to get in shape and feel good about their body, where do they start? Well, I think get a coach and, and get a coach where there's like-minded people that are in a similar situation to you. So um, go to a gym. I, what I did was I joined the triathlon club. So I wanted to do triathlon and I did a sprint triathlon. And with my all or nothing personality, I was like, well, after my first sprint <laughs> triathlon, I should do an Ironman. Um, so let's do a bunch of them and do them quickly in the period of a year. So, you know, my advice Surround yourself with those people that want to do the same thing. Get a coach. I, I really do believe get up earlier in the morning. Utilize the day to its maximum. We are so limited in time as human beings. Take advantage of that time. Spring time is getting lighter. We have longer days with the sunshine. Take advantage. Don't end your day at 5 o'clock. End your day when the sun goes down and live your life by the sun. I think if, if we can do that, we have more energy um, and you have a better mindset. And if you can combine that with surrounding yourself with people, set goals, write them down, commit to them, have an accountability partner, you're going to fall off. You're going to stumble. But because you've got all those things in place, you can come back and keep going. Isn't that the truth? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It well, I was going to say in the next segment, we're going, to we're going to talk about some fun ways to infuse these new habits into our life. So I have a really fun one, but I'm going to cliffhanger it for the next segment. Ooh. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that. So we'll be right back. Voice of the Courage with Ken D. Foster.
Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. Attention business owners, the feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you, who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Kennedy Foster. Voices of Courage. I'm your co-host, Dan Devon. I'm with Gina Ruby and Kennedy Foster. And we are talking about spring and cleaning and getting better at all things healthy, good, and welcome back. Yes, yes. This has been so much fun, man. I'm loving this show. So uh, Gina is going to be talking about uh, some fun ways, we all are actually, about how to bring more fun into doing the things that you may not want to do, but that you're going to be able to clean up the clutter in your life. How cool is that? Before we get to that, in this segment, I always like to let you uh, have a little sample of my new book that's coming out. It's called The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. How cool is that? I wrote this book because I had a lot of clients showing up in my life where they were inspired when they were with me. But what happened? Next day, next day, all of a sudden they'd start letting down. And I, you know what? They need my little voice in their head on and con going. So I wrote a book with daily uh, messages that have some uh, courage uh, quotes in them, have some inspiration, and then some question and action steps. So I'll give you a sample of what that's like. So the cur- uh, the, this is day 98. Courage is knowing what not to fear. Plato. Have you ever wondered why you're going through the experiences and conditions you're going through? Well, since your thoughts, choices, and actions are the cause of your success or failure, to change anything, you must change your thinking. We've been talking about that, right? The thoughts you are focusing on either are causing you to be limited and play small, or your focus is causing you to expand your possibilities and increase your happiness. You may, may have heard this many times before, but don't think that you have to stop hearing it until you actually actualize this in your life, right? Because allowing disempowering thoughts in your life will limit your life on a consistent basis. As stated many times in the book, you are the master of your destiny, and, you're, and, you're, and you master your destiny by controlling the thoughts you are focusing on, and the closer to mastering those thoughts you become, the closer you become to having more success in all areas of your life. So focus on courage, courageous acts today and stay empowered. Try to have one day where you don't allow anything to upset you. Imagine how that would be. Hmm. Stay power-filled the whole day and see what happens. Today ask, what will I focus on to stay empowered throughout the day? How can I remember to still my mind before making any major decisions. What do I know will happen as I make all my decisions while feeling empowered? And the actions, make a list of what you know for sure and then test it to make sure it's real. All right. 
Cool. So like that. that book you can find on the courage to change everything.com the courage to change everything.com you can uh, uh, pre-sale it up there it's going to be released uh, around June 15th so awesome. all right Great. Gina okay I've got some good stuff to share so first of all we hear knowledge is power right and um, unfortunately that's only half true because everybody knows how to lose weight, have great relationships, and make a lot of money. And most people aren't doing any of those things. So I always say knowledge applied is power. You have to put application in there or nothing's going to get done. So when it comes to, let's say, losing weight, if you say, okay, I'm not going to eat you know, uh, Oreo cookies anymore and I'm not going to sit on the couch. Well, if you say no to something, you have to say yes to something else to put in its place or it will just boomerang back to the no. So say yes and be specific. So when it comes to, oh, I'm going to exercise now, that doesn't really mean anything. So find something you like to do. If going to the gym is not your thing, if running is not your thing, then find something active that you do like to do. I love to ballroom dance. I've fallen in love with it. I compete in it now and I do it every day. So that is definitely exercise and it's something I like to do. Um, when I was talking to Ken yesterday, we can take that even bigger and pay it forward. Um, if somebody, there's an elderly person in your neighborhood and they have a little doggy, take their dog for a walk. That's helping that person and it's getting you off the couch and it's exercising. And then when it comes to eating, take a friend who's super healthy and go to Jimbo's or go to Sprouts or Whole Foods and have them take you on a little mini field trip on what they can replace their poor eating habits with something super fun. That's education, but it's also infusing fun into it. You know, I, I, I'm just laughing because I'm thinking of one of my clients that uh, uh, he couldn't get to the gym, right? And so I said, you know, his, uh, his name is Mike. I won't use his last name. But I said, Mike, listen, if you don't get to the gym, what would you like to do to ensure that you do? Because, you know, we learn through pain or pleasure. Gina's talking about the pleasure side, and I encourage that. You know, I love the pleasure side. I like accomplishing something and going to get a, uh, a massage, right? I'll reward mm -hmm. myself. Or maybe I'll take my wife out to dinner and I reward myself that way because we both win, right? You know, something that's really cool. But this guy came in. He couldn't get to the gym. I said, okay, Mike, what do you want to do? He says, well, Ken, I'm going to the gym this Thursday no matter what. He says, I can't get it through pleasure. I'm going to get it through pain. I said, what do you want to do? He says, listen, if I don't get there, I'm going to eat a can of dog food. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I said, Mike, Mike, do not, do, don't eat the whole can of dog food, but eat a little bit because I, I want you back here next week when we coach. <laughs> yeah. So, but the Pain's point, a great motivator, point too. Point is, that's right, isn't it? Pain's mm -hmm. a great motivator. And if you can't do it, you know, I'm not so just eat cans of dog food. But you may say, okay, do something you don't like, like waking up at three in the morning and going for a walk. Do something that you can get leverage or give something to your favorite community, uh, your favorite charity. You know, if you you can't hit it, you give five hundred dollars to your local charity. It'll keep it in the forefront of your thinking, and everybody wins. You win, and the charity yeah. wins. And right? all of a sudden, they find time to do it. They find the energy to do it. You know, and a body in motion stays in motion. So, just getting off the couch, doing that 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 first baby step, and I'm all for baby steps right. because those accumulatively create large, massive results. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, I think that's fascinating. And I think that when I think about pain now, and I think about the pain that I might be in in 30 or 40 years, if I don't move right now, right. that pain is going to be substantial compared to the little sacrifices that I have to make every day right now to be mobile in my 70s, 80s. We're living longer as human beings now, 80s, 90s. We're going to be changing our mindset on we're going to live 100 years. Right. We're not going to live 65, 70 years. It's not the way it's going to go now. So what can those little things for me are a motivator? Like I've got another lot of years, right? I wouldn't tell people how old I am, but I got a lot of years left. How can I keep supple into my eighties and into my nineties, you know, and how can I do that now just by the little pieces? And I want to say it's never too late because never too late. I'm 55 now and I was sharing with Andrew how I started ballroom dancing a year ago and I'm fully addicted and I compete now. And my goal is my, my instructor wants to take me to the world champions and he says, I have a pretty darn good shot from my age category. So I'm embracing my 50s, and it's a whole new world of, of fun and adventure. So it's never too late. It's never too wow. late. And I started when I was 42 years old. I had stopped uh, working out, doing anything. I started uh, walking at 42. 
And last year, of course, I went to uh, Penticton, British Columbia. I represented Team USA, and I was the top ten in the world in aqua bike. Right? So wow, you know, you can do you can do mm-hmm. things that are unimaginable. When you just, like Gina said, the key is one step at a time. But I'll, I'll just give you another key. Okay? And the courage, too. And the courage, I had the courage that, to exactly. step out of my that comfort my zone. Um, okay. Take yeah, it no, no, that was it. Say it. Well, yeah, the courage. Because I thought, oh, maybe I'm too old to start this new sport. And um, I just, you know, I'm a take the bull by the horns kind of girl and, and did it. And um, passion plus some ability plus discipline can take you and the courage to try something new can take you miles and the people around you yes yeah and the people great instructors so we got it so you you know there's some instruction going on today it's like okay let's see let me acknowledge what it is that's not working in my life number two let me set my intention to change that number three let me get in touch with my purpose why am i going to do that number four let me put a, a success team around me uh a little back up a little bit we talked about also Figuring out what it is that is fun for you, okay? What do you want to do? Not what you have to do, must to do, should do, all that stuff. Don't disempower yourself. Just think about what would be fun. You know, if your mind goes nothing, then trade the mind in for another mind, okay? Yeah, find something. Find something. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay? Yeah. So there's there's steps here, and we can we can use these steps to empower ourselves just one day at a time. And listen, all of us, we all of us, Gina, Andrew, myself – Life gets tough sometimes. You know, it happens. Um, unexpected health challenges come. Unexpected financial challenges come. Unexpected death comes to, to loved ones. It's just life happens, right? That doesn't stop us from being healthy and vital and evolving ourselves on a consistent basis. Why? Because that's our purpose. Our purpose is to evolve to feel joy in life and to bring joy to others all of us i can tell you this we're all in a service mentality if this has helped you in some way then guess what our life has gotten better and we hope that you'll go on our facebook page on our twitter uh, feed and give us some likes let us know that this is working for you if uh, and anything any topics that you'd like to have us talk about we'd love to we'd love to know that that'd be great so all right. Any closing thoughts, Gina? How do they get a hold of you? Well, Gina Ruby, G I N A R U B is in boy Y. And my my closing thought is live today to the fullest. It's the only day you've got. Okay. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. We have twenty four hours in a day. Make every single minute of those twenty four hours count. So make a fundamental shift in consciousness, and instead of using courage just from time to time, put it in the forefront of your life. Put it at the heart of your life. For as we all said. Courage is the heart. It is who you are. It is that essence of of you. If you bring it forth, you know, if you let courage permeate your thinking and let your heart lead the way, you're going to be able to take your life to a completely new level. Please tell your friends about us on Facebook, and you can find us on Facebook at VoicesOfCourage.us or VoicesOfCourage.us on the web. Nice. Thank you so much for joining us. We uh, we totally appreciate you being here, and uh, we'll talk with you next week. And I'm going to close this out. What's okay.